Man, y'all know what it is, man. Chizzy Boy TV. Check it in with Michi Bob Boy, man. What it do? Bob Boy. What's up, my boy? Man. How's it been, man? There's a lot going on in the world today, not just the city and the state. Oh, shit, man. You know, it's all, hey, look, we grinding, you hear me? That's what's up, man. It's been a long journey, man. You know, I've seen a lot of ups and downs, a lot of people seeing what's going on right now. Some people might take it how they want to take it, but they don't know the back end of the story on, you know, how you coming right now and why you coming like this right now. Can you- all right. You touch on, you know, a little bit on, you know, what's going on right now. Why you make that play? See, first of all, I don't give a fuck how none of you niggas take it. You feel me? Because you wasn't in the gym shooting with me, nigga. You feel me? But, bro, like, at the end of the day, though, like, it just, bro, I was a prisoner of loyalty. You feel me? And, and you know, niggas took advantage. And that, look, nigga, I believe in niggas. And I had my niggas believing in me for what I believed in. So I let my niggas down, running behind something that another nigga was holding me back from, you feel me? So at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I had to tell my story. That's what's up, man. So you mentioned, you know, they took your publisher, you know what I'm saying? Put a hold on how you eat, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. how that situation go with that situation? Well, well, well so... <clears throat> Honestly, they didn't take the publisher. They they never made it available for me to even create publishing. You feel me? Um, you know, bro, we from the hood, so we dropped music and we weren't registering it. We wasn't we wasn't doing it the right way. I went and figured it out. And when I figured it out, I was telling them niggas that, hey, I need to register my shit. Cause I put my own money behind my shit. I pay for all my own studio time. I pay for all my mix and master. I own all of my masters to my music. So I own my publishing and my writing. You know, and I wanted to register that. But uh, them niggas didn't want to give me that shit for whatever reason. You feel what I'm saying? And when I started asking about it, it was always, oh man, just wait. Oh man, I'll do it. You know, it, bread was a bunch of bullshit. And you had my music through a portal that uh they wouldn't even they wouldn't even support him in the music. Waleed never never he he never uh promoted my album. But I dropped it through your company. You feel me? If you look at that I'm up album, it says others records, STM. You can't find no promotion on Meet You by Boy, no well for others' records. So others records, that's Wally, that's Wally. Luke, DJ Luke Nasty. Right. And a few other artists, you know, I know they don't have. Well, um, do you feel like Cheddar Man should have showed you the way? That, you know, by y'all relationship y'all have? Um, nah, he should have just did his job. Um, cause I, I showed him a lot of shit. What he should have did was be, just be real and say, I don't know, bro. So you think he don't actually know, know the he business? He didn't know the business. I told him how to do publishing. I showed him how to, you know, set up an ass cap. And when I started complaining about my shit, he mysteriously said, OT, help me start an STM publishing um, account. You know, this app I'm basically begging for my shit. Right. So, you know, and I still didn't get it. You know what I mean? Still didn't get it. So uh, to this day, I don't got it. That's day album. I don't got no no rights. I don't got no... no that album is just in my name. I, don't nothing come to me from that album. It'll never come to me from that album. That's Wally Coyote and Cheddar Man album. But they ain't pay for nothing on that motherfucker. Nothing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know what I mean? On your song, man, um, Ain't No Love, man, I heard you mention Maul P, man. Right. Maul P definitely went through some situations, man. You know, I don't know too much about it, man. Tap me in with that. Maul P, that my nigga, man, but Maul P caught the shit in of the stick. Listen, Maul P sat in the studio. When Cheddar Man caught his beard, I, you know, 
I wasn't with them guys. You feel what I'm saying? Right. I was doing other things, but when he caught his bid, Professor was the producer there. Chop had, you know, and for people who don't know, Chop is Professor. So Chop had uh, other things going on back home in Anderson, South Carolina. He had to leave, you know, and go take care of business. You know what I'm saying? So Maul stepped up and became the engineer and ran the studio for about five years. You know what I'm saying? The whole time Cheddar Man was gone. He was going to visit the man. He was just, he was taking care. He was doing what he was supposed to do as an artist of Shine Time. Right. So Cheddar Man came home and didn't get a man the push he deserved. If you got an artist that hold it down like that and everybody leave, and he the only one hold it down for you and keep your name alive, you know what I'm saying? Hey, show that man some fucking respect. Right. Push that man. Give him a shot. You come and put all type of... Nigga, I dropped the single before my own, and I wasn't even there with Cheddar Man left. I came in at the ass end. Cheddar came home 2010. I was in prison. I came home 2011. Got in the mix and did all type of shit with them. Mao didn't drop a, a single until 2013. Damn. But that was after he talked shit, complained about it. You know what I'm saying? But he supported everything that dropped from, from, from Cheddar to, 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 to Lil Sleep to me and my niggas, APNG. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he supported all that shit and waited on his turn. But he had the bitch and complain about getting a shot. And when they did give him a shot, he gave him a half-ass shot. He turned them all up. You feel me? He so, definitely was supposed to do that, man. Maul P always been a good lawyer dude. Yeah, always man. Always been a good dude, mutual dude in my life, respectful. I always respected him Facts. and his crowd. But um, I came around Shine Time because of you. I mean, you was the one that brought me in. Right, facts. And it all became a big family to me. You know, I watched so much happen, so much go on. Do you facts. feel like um, right now he laughing at you? He think it's a joke? Yeah, because he'll, cause he don't care. You know what I'm saying? He mad because I exposed it. But he don't get, he laughing at the situation, though. He's somewhere telling the nigga now, I don't niggas. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to figure it out. But let it be known, nigga. We don't give a fuck about the music no more. We just having fun. You know what I'm saying? Right. You you killed that. He killed that patch. We just having fun. Because now, understand this, bro. In the beginning when we was fucking with, bro, we was broke, me and all my niggas. But we still came together. Me, Boulevard Journey, Moose, Sneed, Dirty. You feel me? We came together. We'll put $10 together and come shoot a video with you. Right. You feel me? Book Man and Matt, shoot a video. Whatever, nigga. We was really, really like, moving. I remember but that we was, But we was broke in the beginning. See, now, bro, niggas done figured it out. And we got everybody got their own motion. My nigga DC 100, he locked up. Little Dirty, he locked up right now doing the bid. But he still got motion. Even in prison. You feel me? So, like, we don't really care about that shit. It's a passion, so we having fun with it. So, you know, um, it is what it is, but at the end of the day, my nigga, I'm going to be the voice for everybody you shit it on because you still shitting on niggas to this day. You still got artists over there that you playing with. You feel me? Right. Like, one of the artists over there, I ain't going to even call his name, but one of the artists over there, his people called me this morning and say, man, I told bro not to go over there because he only used him to help pack out the club. Because that person got a little wave in his city. Right. He do parties in his city. So Cheddar Man need a nigga to guinea pig with the clubs again. You got a club up here in Charlotte that you trying to get popping, and you need a nigga to help you. You know what I'm saying? The same way we did. But you're going you're gonna to blind him and say, bro, I'm going to help you with your music. Put the man's songs on Power Down 8, but that's it. Understand this, my nigga. No, this ain't no diss to Power Down 8 because I respect and I love all them niggas because they supported me since I was a kid with this music. But understand this, it takes more than Power Down 8 to get a nigga to the next level. 
But for, for a rapper, for what we fought, that shit be. You feel me? So you, you can blind a nigga and say, hey, boy, we on the radio. And, 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 and he going to do whatever the fuck you want him to do with that club because right. you're going to keep him on that radio. And that's your payment to him. Bro, help me with this club. You feel me? Yep. But you ain't, you ain't doing nothing for your people for real. But I ain't going to lie to you. I hope the shit that I got going on now in the way that I'm telling the truth, I hope that make him mad enough to really push them niggas to the next level. Because don't nobody deserve you to be playing with them niggas. That's Fact. what's up, man. A lot of people want to know what happened with the Spicy record. Because that was a big record from North and South Carolina. A lot yeah. of people knew that was the record that was going to take off. And then all of a sudden, everything just stopped on it. Yeah, so I... First of all, Spicy wasn't even supposed to be my record. I mean, we had signed the artist. Um... It was his artist. He found the artist. And as always, he come to me like, hey, I need some help with his artist. You feel me? I'm for the book of some studio time. And, you know, so I was like, all right, cool. I come to the studio. Um, the artist couldn't come up with a song. So I had to be in the song. I come with the song and I put him on the song. And it was supposed to be for him. Well, that artist ain't really had no drive. You feel me? Right. He ain't really want to push. So, you know, Cheddar was like, man, we just going to take him off with it and just let you run with it. You feel me? Which it was mine anyway, but I'm a team player. I was going to give it to him. Right. So we ran with it. And it got fire hot, bro. I mean, that shit was... I, like, it went crazy. This grease hot, boy. It went crazy. Like I knew we, myself. Like, it was one time you did a show, and I'm filming for you. I gave somebody the camera and grabbed the other microphone and started ad libbing you as a Facts. hype man. Facts. I mean, because it brought so much energy to my soul. I'm like, Facts, Damn, bro. that shit made me want to just get out there with you and it, work. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a different energy that I was that I had been bringing. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it, it really put some more. It, it it put that push behind me because I knew that we could go to the next level with it. So um, anyway, bro, we push it. I'm spending my money on this shit. And then I ran out of gas. You feel me? Right. I went broke behind it. I told him, hey, boy, I'm fucked up. When I initially told him, he laughed at me. But what you mean? I said, bro, I'm out of gas. But I need you to pick up the load so this shit don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Right. He you, did what he typically do. He you picked feel up like the load. He get jealous at times when he know. A artist got potential to go far. So this is the thing. If anybody from the area really know Cheddar Man, before Cheddar Man went to the feds, he was gonna be that nigga. He was he was Cheddar Man was turning down deals. He was one of the biggest fucking independent artists in the area right. that we ever seen I in our area. Because you had niggas like Mr. Flip from Ridgeway that did his thing, but Cheddar was one of them artists. That was right in that same, you feel what I'm saying? Right. But he was the one closest to us. He was in Rock Hill. So, you know, don't being being in situations like that, it make you believe. You feel what I'm saying? But he ended up catching a bid. So, bro, you know, when you catch a bid in the music game, that shit kill your momentum. You know? And um, when he came home, the, the thrill was gone. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody want to hear that shit. The buzz was gone. Nobody, it was over with. But he was still, the man, he know how to hustle. You feel me? So he was still pushing and making it look good. Do you think he hustled you? That nigga pimped me. He hustled me. He pimped me. You know what I'm saying? Me and my niggas. Not just me. Man, we made that shit look good, dog. You feel me? But we was chasing the light that he didn't want us to catch. Right. But this is the thing, bro. This is why he, he, he is jealous of other artists. Like I say, when he came home, it was, we don't want to hear that shit. We don't want, you know what I mean? Niggas would let him know. Like, they was on, on the internet, like, man, we, that shit ain't it. Then you have an artist like Lil Sleep. He come and he get this buzz that's out of this fucking world. You feel what I'm saying? He but, had a buzz here in Charlotte. Right, but Sleep was like his son. So he can manipulate sleep a little bit and, and control him. You feel what I'm saying? So 
as long as Sleet was up on his, you know, up on his wing, right. he was cool with that because it wasn't but so much Sleet could do. You know what I mean? When a nigga like me came around and me and my niggas was going crazy, he knew I can't control that. So I'm going to do everything I can do to back that shit down. You feel me? Because if them niggas get some money and them niggas breaking the game, it's over. Now, but what, but, up, but, but I'm going to tell you what, Carolina. but I'm going to tell you what this nigga didn't understand. If I had made any type of noise the way that we were supposed to, I was going to never leave him. I would have always kept you with me, nigga. We would have been the richest motherfuckers in the goddamn game because we any artists outside was going to go through that portal. APNGSTM. And the niggas I had with me, they didn't mind. They was with it. Look around, Chaz. You was with us half of the time. Right. Them niggas, all my, all my APNG niggas was rocking STM shit, promoting that shit, making that shit big, when we could have been doing our own label. You feel me? Right. You got niggas like, niggas like Boulevard Jelly that's here with me right now. One of the hottest niggas in the goddamn, in the area. And that's what I used to sit back and think like, damn, Trap Young... He got the he look, had he got it. the talent. Like why he why he ain't snatching trap up and putting him in position? He could have been out of here at a young age. Right. You and know see, what I'm saying? Exactly. And see the thing was, bro, in the beginning, it was really supposed to be like, I got cause what cause see what happened was, bro, I had a wave with I can't wait to get rid. Right. So me and my niggas with team players. The guy like, bro, we gonna push that shit through the door and we making noise while we doing it. Because you got to understand, when we was pushing our kid without getting rich, we had projects like Dirt Around and shit we was pushing around the city, getting that shit hot. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why our motherfuckers, we, we had the way, but we had the plan. It was just up to the nigga who I was letting uh, handle my career to do his job. You feel what I'm saying? And I was going to do my job. You feel what I'm saying? And that shit was going to go, you feel what I'm saying? I don't nigga, think a lot of that. people understand, like, they probably look at this and like, why he let bruh handle his career? Why he do that? Why he do that? They don't understand that y'all was really like real bro. Yeah, that nigga was like my brother. But, but but before that, though, you got to understand, like I said earlier, the man was the biggest independent artist in my area that you could really reach out and touch. Right. You got to understand, bro. I was 14, 15 years old. I opened up for him. I was signed. With Floss Bottles at the time. I opened up a show for Cheddar Man. Um, bro, when I did the show, people would fuck with me because they from from the city. Right. But it was just kind of like, you know, that's it. You know what I mean? Man, when the DJ say, Cheddar Man in the motherfucking building, man, them motherfuckers went crazy. You hear me? I'm talking about, bro, you would have thought, goddamn, Jesus walked in that bitch. You hear me? He went, they went crazy. And this is my first time really being in the same room with him. I'm like, damn, that nigga, that shit like that. You feel me? So you got to understand, as a teenager, that blew my motherfucking mind. I'm like, boy, I got to get next to that nigga. And I'm signed with a whole nother nigga. And guess what he did? Baby Gray took me to his studio to record with them niggas. So I'm sitting there like, damn, I'm sitting here with Cheddar Man, but I'm going to blow. I'm a right. kid, bro. I'm a kid, you know what I mean? So, so let, I mean, let the people know how old you was around that time. I'm about 15, you know what I mean? When I did that song at Cheddar Man Studio, I was 16 years old. You know what I'm saying? I was 16 years old when I did that song. And, um, bro, I just wanted to do the music. I was in the streets, you feel me? I just wanted to be a rapper, bro. Like, because, bro, I, I was living, you know what I'm saying, in the real hood. Like, nigga, you know what I'm saying? With... You, you you know, roaches in the cereal, you feel me? Holes in the floor. You know what I'm saying? Right. Trying to hide the crack from my mama because she can't afford to buy me no goddamn shoes. And I want to, you know what I'm saying? I, nigga, I'm tired of going to school and my shoe bent over and everybody got down fresh as hell, you feel me? Now I'm, I'm going to sell me something. That's what I did. But I knew I wanted to be a rapper. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So I tried everything in my power. You know what I'm saying? And that's why when I did eventually get around, bro, to do business, it's why I trusted him. Because I seen what he could do. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't know the inside of the business. I was still learning. You know what I mean?
That's what's up. I know you can't speak for CEO Joe because he's not here. Free my boy, man. What, if you could say in so many words, what do you think he probably saying about this right now himself? Oh, he gonna be mad at me. And, um, Joe, a real nigga though, so he gonna understand my frustration. He gonna be more upset about I put it in public. Cause we like brothers for real. Right. So he gonna be more upset, like, why you drug why you drug him like that? You feel me? <laughs> Man, you killed him all that. Song, <laughs> but it wasn't really that I drug him, I just told the truth. I, but I'm an aggressive nigga too at times, especially when I'm pissed off. You feel me? So I just told the truth in my way. But Joe, you know he a real nigga, bro. If and to be honest, if I was Joe, I would feel some type of way. You know why? Because when Joe, before Joe went to jail, he was pushing money, 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 money had a money, money kind of buzz in thirty days. He did. Them niggas was going crazy. He did. Joe went to jail, and Cheddar left money on his own, talking about I don't do music no more. I sell houses. What kind of <laughs> puss ass shit is that? If this your motherfucking homeboy artist, and you say you love Joe the way you love him, nigga, and his artist go to jail, nigga, pipe that nigga up for Joe. You screaming free seed, Joe, but you ain't. What kind of pussy shit is that? You let the man buzz die. You know why? Because you secretly have animosity. And you be mad because niggas come around you and get the buzz that you want. But nigga, if you a hustler, right? Go in CEO mode. CEOs get the most money, my nigga. Who give a fuck about being seen? Who give a fuck about being the hottest? I want some money, nigga. You feel me? Be the CEO, nigga. But he don't know how to be a CEO. Bro, I just got off the phone with niggas that's from his city, from his hood. Johnny was there. You feel me? I ain't calling nobody a name because I don't throw niggas on the bus. But them niggas been telling me, Nigga, that shit ain't just start with the music. That nigga was like that in the streets. When that nigga had that work, that nigga was the same way. He ain't gonna let you pass him. He only wants you to buy work from him. He gonna front you everything because he go, he wants you to have to spend money with him. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not letting you buy nothing. Niggas like, bro, I got my own money. Let me buy a brick. Nah, I'll front you a quarter. You know what I'm saying? You keep niggas up under your way like that, nigga. So when it comes to the music, you're doing the same shit. You feel me? So nigga, like, at the end of the day, it's jealousy, it's selfishness. You selfish. You, you don't want niggas. Uh, ever sit down and you think he'll ever release your, your masters and stuff? I don't even want it, bro. I don't want it. I'm gonna tell you why. Um enjoy. You feel me? Right. Enjoy. I don't want that shit. I don't, and, and, and the thing about it, bro, you know, I'm always love that nigga like a brother. See, one thing about me, I'm, I'm real, bro. I ain't going to sit here and say I don't got love for him. I love that nigga to death, but I can't fuck with that nigga. You know, you got family members, bro, you love, but you just can't deal with them, bro. Because they grimy as fuck, you feel me? The motherfuckers will have you down forever, dog. And he one of them niggas. You know what I'm saying? I remember one time, uh, I think I was out in California, and I, I always had deep conversations with you. I always. Fast. Um, it was an incident. One time, I think you needed a car, and you was telling Fast. him about a certain type of car that you nah. Had, and then he so, pulled up. Yeah. I, I don't mean to cut y'all, but yeah. So, I know I was trying to buy a Hellcat. You know what I'm saying? And he was telling me, like, bro. I got the plugs on the Hellcat, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, shit, put me on, you did? He ain't never want to give me the person number. He wanted me to go through him, give him the money, do shit like that. I'm like, nah, bro, like, <laughs> let me let, like, let me talk to the person, you feel what I'm saying? So he never did it. So one day he called me, he said, hey, meet me out Western House at, at the uh, Waffle House. I'm like, all right, cool, you know what I'm saying? I pull us up, you know what I'm saying? I'm chilling. I see this white hair cat come up through the, ooh, we feel me? In my mind, I'm like, what a nigga came through for me? You feel me? Like, <laughs> I jump out of the car and shit in the car. I'm like, 
Well, what's up? I got my money. I don't want nothing. I got my own money. He like, yeah, I just bought this boy. Goddamn, what you think? I said, Goddamn, I'm trying to get one. What you mean what I think? <laughs> Give me the number. He, he laughed. See you, with you know how he do that shit like laugh? Yeah. That shit like laugh he do. I'm like, damn, bro. He like, and I ain't gonna put this out there, but he was like, yeah, but can you do this for me? I'm like, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a slap in the face. You feel me? He basically try to find ways to keep a hold on you. Bro, and you stunned on me at the same time. Like, kind of punk ass shit is that? Like, threw it in your face. Yeah, you did that. You feel me? So, you know, at that point, I was just kind of like, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And, um, you know, uh, me and my baby mama, we were going to buy the house. He was fuck you. You know what I'm saying? And here's what it is. Damn, man. It's been a long journey, man. But it's so and, much, and, though. And, and, and then I came know. to this point. I ain't never think I'd see this day, man. But I knew sooner or later it was going to explode, man. You know, so much, so much shit you can just only take, man. And a lot of people don't know, like, you really telling the truth. Because, you know, I ain't going to say 90% of the time. I could say at least... 60 to 65 percent of the time i was there and Thanks. seen a lot of this shit go on Thanks. you know but it was never my place to say nothing you know what i'm saying Thanks. I watched until the nigga start fucking over you right. then when he start fucking over you you know what i mean but i used to tell niggas that though right like man on the outside well he a 100 ass nigga because the people on the outside he don't have to do no business right it's only favors. Right. So, man, come to the club. I'll give you a couple drinks. Man, uh, put me on the flyer. Man, you know, uh, let me let me rap in the studio. It's only favors. Right. So everybody like, man, that nigga, that nigga a hundred, but he got down, you feel me? Let me come perform in the club. I like that nigga. But when you have to do business with him and you realize he the nigga that don't want you to get ahead. If you do try to do your own business and he can't benefit from it, he don't want nothing to do with it. Right. And I noticed that about him. He not going to promote it. He not going to support it. If he ain't getting nothing out of it, he don't give a fuck about it. Like, I don't had like three major records and I'm running with this nigga filming for him, doing all kind of shit for him. Exactly. Not one time he got behind one of my records. Until you was on the hook of his song. Right. Oh, he pushed the fuck out, go get you the money. Yeah, I wrote the hook. I mean, I know. Zay, Zay made, made the beat. beat. Yeah. And he took Y'all like, took y'all like got y'all publishing. Yeah, he took that. right me. And Zay Money was on that real hard, like trying to get that from him, man. I told Zay, just let, just let it go. So that's how I feel about the I'm up. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, because that album, bro, for one, is only a bad reminder right. of what the fuck I was going through going doing through that album. Time. You know what I'm saying? Do, put, just putting that album together, bro, put, putting that album together, it was a lot of turmoil. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit happened. Like, you know, uh, Leader God was running with us, right? Right. When, when you couldn't come film, Lee was the cameraman, you feel me? Right. Lee got killed in the middle of me making that album. And Lee was on the album because he was a rapper too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Lee was on I mean, the album. One night when he picked Lee up and went down to, Facts. Uh, the further down South Carolina. Bro, the night Lee got killed, we was mixing, mastering the song that he owned. When I got the phone call, Lee was dead. We was mastering his verse. You feel what I'm saying? So it was so much shit going on behind that album, like that people don't know about. It just it just reminded me of a bunch of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So that's how you know. I just feel like it, it, it is what it is. And I had multiple hits on that on that album. You know what I mean? Multiple songs that could have really did something, but that nigga ain't. He didn't want that. And you got to understand, branch niggas around us, that's, that, that's his people. You know what I'm saying? Also, it's like, man, 
bro, let's push. Bro, I got the bro, I got the way. Let's go. And he tell them niggas, man, nah, hold up, it ain't time. And then the buzz die. <laughs> it ain't on his time. Yeah, Everything nah, he knew what he was doing. He gonna let the buzz die. Cause with the buzz die, what you got to push now? Nah. It's over. With. You feel? I know you got a good friendship with Bo. Everybody love Bo, man. Man, Bo is a good, Bo is a good nigga. Right. Bo a good nigga. I don't be mean to cut y'all, bro, but nah, bro. Bo is That's a good nigga. Go. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, man. And this is just real shit. If you know Bo, you know Bo. Everybody know Bo situation. You feel me? Right. He disrespected that man. You feel me? You treat Bo like a butler. Bo the driver. Bo the goddamn uh, store clerk. Bo goddamn whatever it is you need Bo to do. Whatever it is you supposed to do, you get Bo to do it. Bo run around them motherfucker and don't do nothing, bro. But smoke cigarettes and do whatever. Tell the man, ask him to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Bo got enough going on to where he can really be on his own. You know what I'm saying? He can. It might not be the glamorous shit, but he can live on his own. But I personally just feel like bro keep him around to he, he a workhorse. I mean, bro, you know how many times we did shows? We drive hours out of town. We uh, smoking, yeah. drinking, yeah, yeah. and you make dr Bo drive all the way to fuck back five, six hours. Right. He need to go to sleep, bro. Right. <laughs> but guess what Bo do? <laughs> he drive that motherfucker. All back. right, all right. Five that cigarette, hit the road. Know what I'm saying? It was. I'm like, damn, bro. At times, in the beginning, where I wouldn't even go to sleep because I'm like, I know Bo gonna rape this motherfucker. Man, we done been out here 20 hours. You feel me? Oh, God, bro. But I don't say Bo unload the truck, unload the car, load the car up, take the shit up to the hotel room, bro. come back down, run to the store. Bro, go everything. <laughs> everything. I said, God you me? damn. And then you talk to the man fucked up. Bo make the run turn. You know you stupid motherfucker. You ain't seen shit. Now you talk to the man like he's nothing. <laughs> So that's why I say, bro, you 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 treat like he Benson or a Jeffrey the Butler or something like man, that's a grown man, a good nigga. If both fuck with you, he fuck with you, and Bo ain't no goddamn dummy, you feel me? But he a good nigga, and he love Cheddar Man. So he he hey he he a prisoner a larger. It is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Prisoner of larger, bro. And, and Cheddar know that. That's why I say, nigga, you the motherfucking devil, nigga. You know you wrong, nigga. You shit on everybody around you. It ain't a motherfucker close to you that got a good story. Everybody ever did business with you got a bad story. Ain't now nigga got a success story. You feel me? Right. Unless you, they was doing bigger than you and you came in and say, hey, let me in with you. But hey, no nigga come in with you and prosper. But you done went other places and around these clubs and you know what I'm saying? And you know, these niggas let you in. You know what I'm saying? Hey, okay, boom, you can do it ain't but a few, because most of these promoters don't fuck with bro. Like, so it ain't but a few. And like I say, I ain't here to call them niggas names because, you know. But just about, I ain't mean to cut you off, just about every time I said this person want to fuck with me or this person want to work with me, he always had a reason for me not to go fuck with We don't him. need them niggas. Nah, nah, they, he full of shit. That's a bunch of bullshit. We don't need them niggas. Everybody, bro. And it's like he know everybody's business. And I be thinking to myself, like, that's, some of the shit he be saying just be wrong. It don't even be real true. His famous thing is, I'm going to tell you, bro, you know, I'm going to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? I 
was telling the nigga like, man, we need to go link with Tim Boss. You feel me? Like, bro got there, um, you know, he doing what he do. That's, man, nah, what we gonna link with him for? That ain't even his money he's spending. I know the niggas whose money it is. I'm like, bro, I don't give a fuck who money it is. He got the motherfucking juice. If we do, if we supposed to be the big dogs where we from, we need to go link with the big dogs where they from. Right. Know what I'm saying? And make this shit powerful. And that's how you make it stronger. That's how you make it stronger, bro. The first time I ever met Tim Boss, he showed me so much love, bro. And and he and you know, he ain't Hollywood. He ain't none of that, bro. You know, bro, he's a Tim real Boss nigga. He's a real nigga, bro. He's a real nigga. He's a real nigga, bro. I seen him take pictures and speak to anybody, bro. Bro, he's a real nigga. But he know how to move his shit around. Right. You don't see his artists complaining. Them niggas, them niggas don't even give a fuck about music, because guess why? They live a life. You know what I'm saying? And bro, it's like, not to compare them niggas, but I only brought that part up because, like, that was an example of me trying to bridge a gap. And like you said, you can have a reason for not wanting to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? And that excuse was that ain't that nigga money. Bro, who the fuck cares? This probably ain't even your money. <laughs> like, nigga, what? You feel me? So yeah, bro, like, you know, um, I done brought plenty of opportunities to bro. You know? He never wanted to go with the move. Man, my nigga Baby Gray, when we first linked back up, my nigga Baby Gray say, look, I give you a thousand dollars because I was in a two year management contract with bro. He was like, I give you a thousand dollars for his contract and give you two points off the album. He said, I respect what you're doing, but I ain't gonna do all this. I'm gonna go buy my way in. Like I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna pay for everything. Damn. But I need I need sole control. So let me buy the contract. See, then that nigga let me out of that contract. And nigga was like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> so that's why if you see the shout out to my plug album, it got Floss Records, Shine Time, APNG, because he wouldn't let me the fuck out. So I had to goddamn, you know what I'm saying? And Gray was like, bro, I'm going to rock with you, but I can't go the full extent if he ain't going to let you go. Right. Because he ain't, like, he, 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 he is not entitled to what we finna get. So, and I know he ain't really put no money behind you, so just take the thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went on his uh, Instagram to see if he responded to anything and how he responded was, he still dope duffel, he still shine time, <sighs> and, you know, he, he worked hard to get where he at, something like that. You one of those fake ass quotes and he then, put up here and there. One of them damn had. master manipulation ass quotes. <laughs> Your man is a master manipulator. You have people thinking you so fucking positive that you got man. The man get up every morning and say some stupid ass shit that sound good, but when a nigga know you, bitch, you faking. Know what I'm saying? But you got to make the public look like, bro, that shit be fake. That shit be fake. That shit faker than that goddamn chain he gave his artist. <laughs> Do you think I should buy me a diamond tester and start testing some of these diamonds going on, man? <laughs> Better stay away from them niggas. You do that shit. <laughs> Word. Like, and, and, and that's the thing. Chessy Boy TV about to get a diamond test. I mean, because listen. I'm about to order me a diamond and test that, and, tonight. And that's the thing, bro. Like, the man that gave me some fake-ass jewelry, you feel me? I remember, bro. Yeah, like, That's we, what I was getting to, like. Yeah, like, we pull up at a show, you know what I'm saying? And he, hey, throw this on, you feel me? Like, bro, I, I ain't even gonna fake it with you, like. At one time, bro, like, like I said, it's like my big brother. Bro, I, I, like, I trusted your judgment, you know what I mean? I, you give me some shit, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I lay the shit on the dresser. Shit turned brown. Like, damn, what the fuck? And then I'm going to tell you this, though. You got an audacity to call me, ask me for it back. Like, man, that shit in the trash. What you mean you throw it away? Man, that shit in the trash. 
Come on, man. man. <laughs> man listen, man. That's what's up, man. I love you like a brother, man. No, no not back, like a bro. brother. You are my brother. Yeah, for life. You, you know, know what I'm saying, bro? North and South been right. Carolina brothers, right. man. I always had a good relationship, man, Fetch. with all your family, man. Your cousins, Fetch. your friends. I ain't never seen you fall out with nobody. Come on, I ain't man. never seen you. I mean, everybody who I know that fucks with you still fuck with you to this day. Cause, bro, I try to keep that shit as hundred as possible. Like, nigga, I don't give a, like, listen, bro, I ain't never was in competition with the next man, you feel me? Like, I always wanted my niggas to eat with me, you feel me? Bro, when I was running around this bitch homeless, if, if, and, 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 like, my nigga Boulevard Johnny let me sleep on the couch, right? I'm gonna found a plug, you feel me? Bro, let me trap in his spot. Damn. But guess who was trapping with me, though? Because we all was broke. You feel me? Right. We were right in the bitch fucked up. Shit, we turned that bitch up. Well, ain't it amazing, you though, how, you, how we look back now, but some of them broke days we had, it was fun than the motherfucker. Bro. <laughs> you know what I'm telling you, why, bro? Trying to get some of them days back, like, man. Yeah, bro, because. The moments, you... like, it was so fun. Like, bro, we all was fucked up. At the time when we first met each other, but that shit was what we was having a ball with life, though. Because you had freedom. Right. You know what I'm saying? You already worried about shit. And we was hungry. Right. We was young, thinking like, boy, we finna blow. So the money at that point didn't matter because we knew where we was headed. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the money shit that started coming into play until you looking at your kids growing up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You trying to figure out, you know, you in the house with your old lady or whatever, and you can't pay no bills. You feel me? But you a grown man talking about you a rapper. That's when that shit start. You feel me? That shit start fucking with you. Then you start paying attention to shit going on around you. You know what I'm saying? And now niggas really put it in your face that they eat however they eat. And you start. That's when you have to figure it out. You feel me? So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Meet you, man. I appreciate you coming through, man, to chop it up with me, to give me the story, man. Bro, you know it's all love. You could have gave the story to anybody else you know around the world, love, man, bro. but you came and gave it to me, man. Hey, that's a short version, bro, you know, because like- oh, already. No, this is just the beginning, man. I'm behind you. Because I'm going to be the real with behind you. behind you, man. I got, man, every day since I've been out, since this has been going on, everybody I run into say- Tell me, you man, get at me, man. We fuck with them, we with them, man. Everybody in Charlotte is fucking with you, bro. Man, bro. Yeah, man. What, what the fuck? What the I, fuck? Oh, uh, monster in Charlotte. I'm talking about. I, hey, listen. I'm doing this interview, right? I only picked up because it's you. Then my, I'm, I'm, in, I'm right in the middle of the interview. Then my nigga Kenny Wayne. You know what I'm saying? What's like, up, Kenny Wayne? I know who Kenny Wayne is. Yeah, I'm up here with Chance Boy doing the interview, like. <laughs> My boy say what's up. I got to get your interview too, man. All right, bro. Anytime. Hey, listen. I was, we just we just speaking on the situation there. I just, you know, I picked up because, like, I was just letting niggas know, like, bro, shit, I speak on that shit just for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah but uh, I'm going to hit you as soon as I leave out of here, bro. All right, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I just, bro, you know, I fought, I, I fought my way in. And this is what I want to leave you with. Mm -hmm. God was telling me and my niggas we ain't supposed to be there no way. Because when we tried to get over there, he didn't want us there. And we went over there anyway. and outworked every artist that was over there. And this ain't no disrespect to nobody. Because my OP, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? Sleep, he all right. You know what I'm saying? I don't got no issue with him, but we grew apart. We ain't close as we used to be, but he cool. I got respect for him. But we outworked everybody. You feel what I'm saying? And he didn't have no choice because it looked bad on him. Right. How I let these niggas come over here and go crazy when I got 20 artists. You feel me? So he let us in. But under the impression that he was going to be able to manipulate Trap, Boulevard Johnny, he did manipulate Moosey. Turned my nigga into his club promoter. You know what I'm saying? Had Moosey around his packing out the club. Yeah. For years. Yeah. And ain't show my nigga the game, though. You ain't teach my nigga the club game. If you're going to put him in that, show him the game. You feel me? But you ain't want to show him the game 
Because, because if you show Moose the game, he would have took that shit over. He would have did it the right way and passed you, and you ain't had no more control over. So yeah, you know what I mean. That's it what's up, it. man. We out of here, man. Meet you by Bo. Yeah, bro. Hey, Real look. true stories of South Carolina. Facts. You hear and me? North Carolina. You hear me? Like, look, bro. Dirty around the streets. You know what I'm saying? Going crazy. You feel me? Ain't no love dropped at night at 12 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? That shit already going crazy. Boulevard Johnny up next. You feel what I'm saying? And my nigga tell you. I know I'm keep going to it, but let me say this. Do your thing, bro. I do what I'm supposed to do with my artists, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? My nigga setting up this shit now. I ain't doing it for him so I can sit him. I can easily sit Johnny, you feel me? Because he trusts me, you feel me? I can say, bro, I got you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to set this shit up, woo -woo. and I know he's going to go crazy, mm -hmm. <laughs> without a doubt. I know he's going to go crazy. But nah, I tell bro, hell no, nigga, he's going to look at me like I owe you shit. I'm going to show you what's it's going on, you feel me? I'm going to show you how to do it. Woo the woo, you feel me? I hit that nigga baby mama this morning. When, when I can't get in touch with bro, hey, tell that nigga, hey, hey, tell your brother, come on, we got to do this. Man, nah, bro. I'm, I, I tell my niggas about the game. I tell my niggas about publishing it, writers, creators, and mastering it. You know, how to register your shit the right way. Mm -hmm. How to follow your music. Like, bro, that's what... Um, Motherfucking big homie, big artist, CEO, whatever you want to call a nigga, that's what you do. You don't you don't leave these people in the blind so you can goddamn manipulate them, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause when you look out for niggas, and if they solid, boy, they'll never let you down. Never let you down, man. Facts. We still around. We still here. You see why we still right? We still here. You hear me? And we still on top. I call you for <laughs> hey look, I call you for a favor, right? Right. You say, boy, bring me what you got. Fuck that. Let's you hear me? It. Let's do it. I don't give you every, I would have did it for free. That's what I'm saying, but I'm just saying every time. Just because just because I know what's going on. That's what I'm saying, but every time, though, bro. Yeah. It ain't no, it don't, it, bro, it's like, bro, I, I got you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Every time. I want to see you win, That's bro. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm trying. That's all I'm saying, bro. You hear me? But, yeah. I no, know you know I love you like a brother. Y'all niggas win with the rap shit. I'm going to be there shooting the videos. It's not there shooting the booth. Like, we, we start and the whole film coming. I, I want to be the road manager. But not make only sure, that. Make sure the artists get to the shows. All right, the and not only that, that, bro, you you know, anybody that's around me that's helping us with this shit, bro, we cutting niggas into the contract to where they can eat and start their own shit. Right. To keep what we doing got going on, and, and to keep what we got going on going, and to grow shit for you and your people. That's my vision. We put each other on and you put your people on. You know what I'm saying? One more thing, bro. Just like Johnny. Johnny brought me his nephew, Lil Nooski, right? Years ago, bro, you fuck my nephew. Nooski dope. I say, Johnny. That nigga dope. Me and I, I'm like, he thinking I don't want to fuck with Nooski. I'm like, no, bro. That's your artist. Turn him. You turn him up. You feel me? I turn you up. You turn him up. Showing them the game. I could have easily said, all right, yeah, hell yeah, let's go. But nah, bro, why would I do that? And then that's your shot. That's your family. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just different. I'm just different, bro. And when I was in the street, like anybody around me know, I let them fuck up 100 packs. You feel me? And still give it to them. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? So come on, man. You know? It is what it is. That's what's up, man. Meet you by Bo, Chizzy Boy TV, man. And we out of here. Bye, bye, Bo. Yeah. Mm hmm. Now that was a good out.